What's going on, Forward Family? Forward Fabian in the building. We're doing a reaction to Biden addressing his decision to quit the 2024 race. Let's just go ahead and hop right into it, man. Comment down below. Let me know y'all's thoughts, man. And uh, we're going to see what uh, Sleepy Joe got to say. Mr. President. My fellow Americans, I'm speaking to you tonight from behind the Resolute Desk in the Oval Office. In this sacred space, I'm surrounded by portraits of extraordinary American presidents. Thomas Jefferson wrote the immortal words that guide this nation. George Washington showed us presidents are not kings. Abraham Lincoln yes. who implored us to reject malice. Franklin Roosevelt who inspired us to reject fear. My dog JFK. I revere this office, but I love my country more. It's been the honor of my life to serve as your president. But in the defense of democracy, which is at stake, I think is more important than any title. I draw strength and I find joy in working for the American people. But this sacred task of perfecting our union is not about me. It's about you, your families, your futures. It's about we, the people. We can never forget that. And I never have. I've made it clear that I believe America is at an inflection point. One of those rare moments in history when the decisions we make now. Bro, this is why I hate, like, uh, and no disrespect to Mr. President, but politicians be just beating around the bush, like, everything's politically correct it's got to sound a certain way and this is not about me it's about the people now let's you know that's kind of like a two-sided you know what i mean that's like uh that's a coin essentially the the, the double-sided coin right it is about you bro you know all right let's start it's factual that it's not about him in the sense that if he's not capable to be a suitable candidate yes do what's best for the people so yeah Aside from himself, he's not thinking about himself and maybe ego or, you know, uh, pride, wanting to be president. So if he knows he's not capable, he's putting the people first. But then simultaneously, it is still about you, Mr. President, because, you know, whether people want to side with the fact that he's not stable mentally, he's just getting elderly, he's not capable of, you know, uh, another four year term and, uh, I guess it's too much on his shoulders to continue as president. That is something personal, man. But it's got to be fluffed up and be all media correct. Determine our fate of our nation and the world for decades to come. America's going to have to choose between moving forward or backward, between hope and hate, between unity and division. We have to decide do we still believe in honesty, decency, respect? freedom, justice, and democracy. In this moment, we can see those we disagree with, not as enemies, or, but as, as fellow Americans. Can we do that? Does character in public life still matter? No. That went out the window a while ago. I mean, it matters, but do people take pride in being a moral person and ethical? I mean, we can see the state of not just the world, we, like America. It's the world we live in, man. In modern era, there's a lot of degrading things going on. You know, a lot of chaotic activities being groomed as normal nowadays. So unity, I mean, there's separate parties for a reason. People are going to agree to disagree. So you like, what are we saying here? You, there will never be complete unity in the sense that not everybody can agree on one thing. So, I mean, it sounds great on paper, right? I believe I know the answer to these questions because I know you, the American people. And I know this, we are a great nation because we are good people. When you elected me to this office, I promise to always level with you, to tell you the truth. And the truth, the sacred cause of this country is larger than any one of us. And those of us who cherish that cause- I agree with that. Cherish it so much. A cause of American democracy itself must unite to protect it. You know, in recent weeks, it's become clear to me that I need to unite my party in this critical endeavor. 
I believe my record as president, my leadership in the world, my vision for America's future all merited a second term. But nothing, nothing can come in the way of saving our democracy. That includes personal ambition. So I've decided the best way forward is to pass the torch to a new generation. That's the best way to unite our nation. You know, there is a time and a place for long years of experience in public life. But there's also a time and a place for new voices, fresh voices, yes, younger voices. And that time and place is now. Over the next six months, I'll be focused on doing my job as president. That means I'll continue to lower costs for hardworking families, grow our economy. I'll keep defending our personal freedoms and our civil rights, from the right to vote to the right to choose. I'll keep calling out hate and extremism, make it clear there is no place, no place in America for political violence or any violence at ever, period. I'm going to keep, keep speaking out to protect our kids from gun violence. I mean, at the end of the day, man, political violence has been a thing throughout history. It's common. You know, it's just common nature now. Is it okay? No. But then it goes to show, right, how drastic and how extreme people will go to f defend or, you know, try to sway or have a say so in um, the political direction of the country, right? We're people who live in this country, so you have to have some type of understanding of how you're affected as a U.S. citizen, right? So it'd be very ignorant to say, I don't pay attention to politics. I don't pay attention to what, you know, the House and what Congress and, you know, Senate and, you know, pretty much what my country is doing for me. You know what I mean? It, it's a fairly ignorant statement. But uh, at the end of the day, man, it's like, I don't know, man. Politics is just... It's a touchy subject because people don't want to be able to stand 10 toes and articulate what they believe in without feeling bad. I mean, agree to disagree, right? People gonna have opinions, but there's always been room for political violence because people are willing to kill in order to, like I said, sway a certain narrative or not have certain people of power or certain people of influence being put in that position of power, right? Because it's going to change the dynamic. We've seen presidents be assassinated, bro. It's not nothing new, dog. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, it just, like I said, that's just the seriousness in which people are willing to die for, you know, their freedom or what people would call their freedom, you know? So, or their existence in America. Our planet from climate crisis is the existential threat. And I will keep fighting my, for my cancer moonshot. So we can end cancer as we know it, because we can do it. And I'm going to call for Supreme Court reform, because this is critical to our democracy, Supreme Court reform. You know, I will keep working to ensure America remains strong, and secure, and the leader of the free world. I'm the first president in this century to report to the American people that the United States is not at war anywhere in the world. We'll keep rallying a coalition of proud nations to stop Putin from taking over Ukraine and doing more damage. We'll keep NATO stronger, and I'll make it more powerful and more united than any time in all of our history. I'll keep doing the same for our allies in the Pacific. You know, when I came to office, the conventional wisdom was that China would inevitably, would inevitably pass the United, surpass the United States. That's not the case anymore. And I'm going to keep working to end the war in Gaza. Bruh. Bring home all the... He's saying he's attributing... Is he? Am I understanding that correctly? He's attributing the fact that China is not the, the leader or the world power. Uh, is He's attributing those efforts to them not surpassing us to himself. You know, obviously... America's the the world leader, essentially, right? So he's pretty much taking full accountability. <laughs> I mean, I may be reaching with that, but come on, man. Hostages and bring peace and security to the Middle East and end this war. We're also working around the clock to bring home Americans being unjustly detained 
all around the world. And another thing about Biden's you know, strategy, I believe that he wants to be able to have certain uh, relationships. He wants to strengthen relationships, have partnerships, uh, which is good, I guess, when it comes to having aid, other countries coming to our aid when it comes to world wars and things of that nature. And, you know, you saw Putin meet with the uh, old homeboy, you know, North Korea. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, they're building bonds, trying to have certain powers come together and create certain deals to where if all goes to if all else fails, you know, we have a unity amongst a brotherhood. You know, uh, Kim Jong Un, you know what I'm saying? And Putin. So it seems like that a lot of people hate Biden for the certain narrative of, I guess, giving money to people who aren't Americans, not supporting Americans in the need of, of financial risk and. You know, sending X amount of millions of dollars to other places. I mean, those places are in need, too. But I think his whole thing is when he talks about unity and becoming, uh, I guess, allies. That's the word I was looking for. Making strong allies. I think that's where he sees more value and priority. Whereas, you know, the right. Agree to disagree. We've come so far since my inauguration. On that day, I told you, as I stood in that winter, we were stood in a winter of peril and a winter of possibilities. Peril and possibilities. We're in the grip of the war. We were in the grip of the worst pandemic in the century. The worst economic crisis since the Great Depression. The worst attack on our democracy since the Civil War. But we came together as Americans. And we got through it. We emerged stronger, more prosperous, and more secure. Today, we have the strongest economy in the world, creating nearly 16 million new jobs, a record. Wages are up. Inflation continues to come down. The racial wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years. We're literally rebuilding our entire nation, urban, suburban, rural. Russia, inflation is slowly but surely coming down. Manufacturing has come back to America. We're leading the world again in chips and science and innovation. We finally beat Big Farm after all these years to lower the cost of prescription drugs for seniors. And I'm going to keep fighting to make sure we lower the cost for everyone, not just seniors. More people have health care today in America than ever before. And I signed one of the most significant laws helping millions of veterans and their families who are exposed to toxic materials. You know, most significant climate law ever, ever in the history of the world. The first major gun safety law in 30 years. Today, violent, the violent crime rate is at a 50-year low. We're also securing our border. Border crossings are lower today than when the previous administration left office. My thing is, like, are we fact-checking all these statistics, right? Because on one narrative, you hear, like, the other parties will use these same points to argue why... Maybe the right will argue why the left didn't take advantage in these certain top on these certain topics or these certain subject matters, right? If we're talking about inflation, I mean, inflation increased, you know what I mean? So if he's talking about we're cutting back or working our way down, yeah, I mean, it's like looking at the positive or looking at the the glass being half half full versus half empty. Like, it's not necessarily like we're in the best place. I mean, and then you talk about violence in the criminal. And, you know, the crime rates and things of that sort out I, I, to believe to understand that, you know, crime rates were skyrocketing through the roof. You know what I mean? Like, especially, in, you know, a lot of the inner, you know, the, the prominent inner cities like Chicago and stuff like that. So uh, I don't know. Like, it, it sounds cool. Right. I mean, it sounds good to say that we're we're whack, we're, we're, we're eating away or. We're, we're, we're whacking away, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? We're cutting back. We're cutting down on these X, Y, Z type of things, but they're still at an all-time high, higher than they've ever been. So now there's more jobs than ever. But, I mean, you see my point? I think, like, sometimes you can argue subject matter or a, a, a certain topic with just the... Um, with having with having hope and having uh, what's the word I'm looking for optimism 
that we're, we're, we're hand leading these things, we're tackling these things. But if we still look at the actual exact statistics and how a uh, uh, comparison of how things were with maybe Trump in office compared to how Biden, you know what I'm saying? We're going to see a, a dramatic difference. And that's a part of the reason why people want to side uh, with Trump just through action, speaking louder than words and seeing looking at the numbers and looking at the data and knowing that there was a specific improvement when he was in office. So, I mean, it's one thing to remain optimistic and say, hey, we're working towards these things and, you know, we're, we're, we're still, you know, the technology, you know, leader and provider in the world. And like, well, bro, like <laughs> you're not really like none of the arguments are really winning me over to say that, you know what I'm saying? And I've kept my commitment to appoint the first black woman to the Supreme Court of the United States of America. I also kept my commitment to have an administration that Disc. looks like America and be a president for all Americans. That's what I've done. I ran for president four years ago because I believed and still do that the soul of America was at stake. The very nature of who we are was at stake. And that's still the case. America's an idea. An idea stronger than any army, bigger than any ocean more powerful than any dictator or tyrant. It's the most powerful idea in the history of the world. That idea is that we hold these truths to be self-evident. We're all created equal. Endowed by our creator with certain inalienable rights, life, liberty, pursuit of happiness. We've never fully lived up to it, to this sacred idea. Just a whole bunch of mumbo jumbo, man. We're eight minutes in to an 11 minute video and we haven't heard any concrete reasons as to why he's explaining his decision to quit i mean we can assume so as people with common sense but you know the beginning of the video is just doing what he's doing for unity and you know it's just like we didn't really you know what i'm saying we're gonna, we're gonna we'll stop the video there but it's interesting seeing a lot of the old clips and things that you can find on the internet because randomly on my feed i've seen a whole lot of videos of joe uh, Biden in the past, like they have contact or videos from him in the seventies, and he was talking about it's like a video of, like the most outlandish things Biden has said, and uh, bro was saying some funny stuff, man. Just look, just look up, look up the wild things Joe Biden has said over the years, or so whatever those videos are called, man. You're gonna find some funny stuff on the guy, but um, and then I saw a video the other day of Trump. He was 34 years old, and they're asking him if he would ever run for presidency, and he was like, nah. You know what I'm saying? It's just funny how things change over time, right? So comment down below. Let me know y'all's honest thoughts. Obviously, we know, you know, why Joe Biden uh, chose to step down, man. I mean, his health is on the decline. Let's keep it Let's keep it a bean. Uh, with that being said, comment down below, man. And as a person, man, I got respect and love for people. So, like, just seeing people bash other individuals just... I mean, maybe just because of certain beliefs, right? Uh, I think when you're picking somebody to run your country, you have to stand 10 toes and be adamant about why you want a certain person in office, right? But when that becomes a personal thing, that's kind of, you know, a lot of people can't separate just the business from the personal. People attacking Joe's personal life, you know what I'm saying? And I'm not going to sit here and throw him under the bus. I'm just going to have, I'm going to pretty much... Uh, play devil's advocate in a sense and have tough and honest conversations. That's why my commentary was aligned with what I was saying. I'm not going to sit here and cookie cutter and beat around the bush. And you know what I'm saying? I, even though I can do that for the purpose of the context of the video, I should be a politician. I, I know how to ramble, right? But I'm not going to attack his character and him as a human being. You know what I'm saying? But that's where the waters get muddied here. You know, nowadays people don't care. They're going to throw you under the bus and, uh, Want your family to go down along with you just because you're you're, you're a Democrat. I was going to say you're a leftist. <laughs> but you know what I'm saying? It's like, come on, man. Anyways, man. Comment down below y'all's thoughts. We'll see y'all in the next video. We out. God bless.